what does this phrase mean to you? What does calling your own shots mean to you? Man, so that's definitely like a, a, a personal mantra right now. Uh, and to me, it's, you know, controlling your controlling your destiny as much as possible and, you know, taking, you know, grabbing the bull by the horn. So call your own shots. I, I got it on, got it on right now, the shot caller. So that's me building something that I want to see. I want to see a sports culture, uh, you know, platform that's more diverse. That's talking about the sports business, digital content. Um, I want that to be a thing. That's an ethos. And it's not just with the business. That's just with life. Um, if there's something that I aspire to do, you know, I want to call my own shots. I want to figure out how I could do that. All right, all right. We are back with another episode of the Couch with Rob Fields. And ladies and gentlemen, we got another banger for you. All right, so listen, you know we have to lay out the red carpet for our guests on the show. And today, we got a real one on the show, y'all. So to, to, to break it down for him, uh, he's, a, he's a native of Brooklyn, New York. And he's a mover and shaker in the sports and entertainment space. He's no joke. His resume speaks for itself. I'm excited to talk to him on today's episode. And I, I, I don't want to talk, talk you guys head off. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give big hand claps to Bryce. To Rod. Peace, peace, peace. Yeah, peace, peace. Did I, did I, did I pronounce your oh, yeah, name? Oh, yeah, A1. Last name correctly? A1, yeah, you're right, good. Cool, you're cool. good. Yo, man, right, appreciate yeah. you. Nah, man. Thanks for coming on the platform, man. I mean, you know, we we met before uh, we started to record, man, and I just I, I was excited to get to this one. So, Bryce, I, I want to kick the episode off like this. You are fresh off an all NBA All Star experience. Let me let me address the elephant in the room. What does All Star Weekend look like? In Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> Listen, <clears throat> I mean, it, it, it's All Star Weekend in general. NBA All Star Weekend in general is is one hell of a you know experience. Just from a, a cultural standpoint, obviously, you know, basketball, sports, culture, entertainment, um, you know, merged together in one city. You know, for you know, three days, two, three days. Uh, and no matter where it's at, you know, it could be in the middle of nowhere. The NBA is going to take over. You know, the culture is going to be there. Events and brands are going to show out. You know, you can connect with a whole bunch of colleagues, um, you know, friends in the industry, meet new people, you know, network, all that stuff. So it's, it's definitely a convergence of, of, of all of that and then some. Um, and really, I, this is my first time in Salt Lake and I had a good time, too. Like, I, I didn't know what to expect. All you know about is snow and mountains. Um, but you know, it was yeah. the weather out there and it, it was, it was a good weekend overall, overall, it was, it was perfect. Yeah. That's not like one of those destinations where you say, Oh, the all-star weekend is in this city. All right, yo, we pulling up. When well, you hear Salt Lake, I think for a lot of people, they get a little intimidated or well, not even really intimidated, but it's just like, it's not one of those cities that will automatically draw people in. You ain't I mean, rushing just, to go get, yeah, you ain't rushing to, you know, the, the, the airlines to, to buy your ticket. You, you contemplating it for a little bit. Yeah, it's not in the Barclays or, you know, it. I mean, people, a lot of people love Phoenix. You know, it's not L.A., it's not Miami, it's not like that, right? Right. No, but that's that's interesting. Could, could you feel, like, could you feel Utah in that moment or did it just, did the all-star experience just kind of just just crash over you could you it, really get a get to feel that, <clears throat> that that salt lake or that utah culture in there you know you do a, you, you get a little bit of both obviously um you get a lot of the league uh and and what every brand does and kind of how they take over how they leave their fingerprints um in their market in any market and city um but then obviously you're still connecting with people in there whether or not you hop in the uber or lyft uh and you know you're kind of talking to people uh, men and women that are from the city, from the state. And some people might not even know what the hell's going on that weekend. 
you know, which, which is the wildest part to me. Like, you, I've had people hop in the car, like, "Oh, you out here from New York for for what? What's this?" And then you have some people that know about it, um, and they'll tell you about some good recommendations, some places to go get some food, get a good drink, um, and kind of give you the lay of the land, man. Like, so you'll you'll get a bit of both. Um, you'll get a taste of of the culture there just by kind of moving around and just you know supporting uh, some of the different you know local establishments there too nice all right so bryce usually when i have people because we we're gonna get to why if you were at all-star anyway you know you weren't there just kind of hanging out you know you you were there for a reason so usually when i bring people on the show um i like to hear a good story you know and in order for for us to get our stories out we have to start from the beginning are you cool with that yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, cool. So tell me about young Bryce. Yeah, uh, you know, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I, you know, it, obviously the the mecca of a lot. You know, you talk about basketball culture, sports culture. Uh, you know, it's my my biggest background is sports culture and entertainment. I, I really hang my hat on all three of those buckets. Um, and then just growing up in New York. Um, in Brooklyn specifically, you get a taste of all that. You know, I'm a big Knicks fan. So you got, you know, sports there, all, all the different teams are here in, in the city. Um, you grow up kind of playing sports to a certain extent. Um, you know, you got Shout family. Shout out to the Knicks too. Yo, Knicks is rolling Yo, right now. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, get too, I'm not gonna get too hyped, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I don't I don't wanna cut let's, you let's, off. Let's let's follow up to... when the playoffs come. But yeah, I I'm I'm happy yeah. about that right now too. Um yeah. but yeah, so you know, growing up with, with, with family in the area. You know, you're, you're, you're into a lot of sports, you're, you're active, um, you're taking part in, in, in the culture that is New York City, that is Brooklyn, everything that you can think about, you know, I got to do the right thing poster right now, Jackie Rops over my shoulder too, you know what I'm saying? So like Radio. that's, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, <laughs> you know, that's the culture that I, I really came up in, um, and, you know, talking about early 90s and, and stuff like that too. So um, a lot of that really shaped uh, my upbringing um, to, to kind of where you know, the direction that it took me into that. Yeah. So as a, as a kid growing up in Brooklyn, I mean, the, the culture is very thick there. So it's, it's a lot of just beautiful culture. It's a lot of history in Brooklyn, New York. What, what did you dream of as a kid? What were some of your aspirations growing up? You know, the one thing that's, that's pretty cool about, you know, at least growing up in, in Brooklyn and, and just being in New York is that you've seen a little bit of everything. Um, so you've seen right, people right. with the, 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 the hoop dreams and, and I didn't necessarily didn't have that, but I was curious about sports. I love sports. That was the foundation. That was the passion right there. You know, then graduated to kind of wanted to know the business behind sports. Um, so, you know, my mind would kind of jump to different things throughout different portions of time. You know, I wanted to be a dentist for, you know, two minutes and then one thought mm -hmm. I wanted to be a lawyer, uh, or thought I wanted to kind of be a sports agent um or, or things that I saw on TV and stuff like that. So, you know, luckily I, I was able to kind of see from afar and sometimes up close um examples of 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 men and women in, in, in these positions. Um and then it was really just on myself to kind of figure out what worked out naturally, what felt natural to me as I kind of, you know, continued to matriculate uh and, and got older. So it, it definitely was a range of different things uh until I found some stuff that that actually made sense and, and to actually you know, I felt like I had a passion for, you know? Yeah. So what, what was, we talk about sports entertainment. What, what was that first sports memory that you can remember that, that first time where maybe it was Patrick Ewing, you know, dunking the ball to win the game, the, the, the Knicks making the finals, the, the heated battles with the Knicks and the Miami heat. Like what? What's that first sports moment that came to you, and you said, "Oh yeah, I'm hooked." Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of what you just mentioned. So it's definitely a lot of Knicks stories. Um, my father grew up a Knicks fan, uh, so that kind of was instilled in me from a young age. But if I could pick one thing, or maybe two things, one in terms of my favorite player growing up, it was Patrick Ewing. My pops loved Patrick Ewing. You know what I'm saying? The high yeah. shorts with the knee pads and the, had the high top fade. Beast was, you know what I'm saying? That was the man. Um, and then you had the yeah. squad, the Larry Johnson, uh, you know, the, the rest of the team there, the Harpers, you know, to a certain extent. But 
in terms of iconic moments, and I'm a big Jordan fan, just like anyone else that grew up in the 80s and 90s, but the dunk when Starks dunked on Jordan, you know, yeah. I was torn. I was like, damn, we're a Knicks fan. That was cold, but that's MJ. But I got to give a man respect for dunking on, you know, MJ 2-3. So yeah. that's something that, you know, as a Knicks fan, you get a lot of flack. A lot of people want to talk stuff, you know, and talk about how you couldn't get over the, the Bulls or the Rockets or the Heat. But you kind of go back to certain moments. Well, we dunked on Jordan. You know what I'm saying? St- Starks I, dunked on Jordan. The crazy thing about, uh, you know, Knicks fans, we can compare y'all to the Cowboys, man. Y'all are loyal. And y'all get a lot of flag. People give, give you a hard time. The history is there. But lately, things have been tough. So y'all, y'all been getting a hard, you know, y'all, y'all been getting it pretty tough over the years, man. I'm happy to see that the Knicks have now made a resurgence uh, as a result of Josh Hart, who <laughs> as <laughs> Josh, right? That's funny, right? <laughs> right. To be the X factor, you know. As soon Listen, as he comes, y'all going to nine game winning streak. It ain't easy. You know? It ain't easy on this <laughs> side, man. It's not. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of tears, you know. But you know, we waiting on yeah. that that our moment so we can kind of rejoice. No doubt. So tell me this, Bryce, man. How does one go from Brooklyn, New York to Hampton, Virginia to go to college? Like, what, so, What's that process like? So it's actually it's actually a kind of a funny story. So born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, I actually had an opportunity to go to uh, a boarding school, college prep school in, in, in Connecticut. So I did that for four years. And Obviously, predominantly white environment, great school experience. You know, I had an opportunity to play sports out there and great education, all that stuff, too. But I knew, all right, I need something different. I need I need, it. I need a change. I need some culture. I need some, you know what I'm saying? I need some flavor. Didn't want to stay in the Northeast. Um, so I, I had an opportunity to either stay in the Northeast area, uh, but a, an older mentor of mine, like a big sister of mine, um, essentially knew I was interested in sports and in sports industry, sports marketing and stuff like that. She said, Hey, why don't you come check out Hampton? We have a, a pre-college program that you can take a couple classes, come out here for the, for the summertime, you're out there for two and a half months, get the lay of the land. You know, you can kind of just I- I engage, get, get, get to know the school and classes and stuff like that. If you like it, then, you know, you're, you're good to go. If not, then you can find something else to do. So I was like, you know what? They have the program I'm interested in. I went there for, you know, two and a half months in what they call a pre-college program at Hampton. Shout out to HU. Um, and I, I didn't look back, yeah, man. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't look back. I had the, the best two and a half months of that summer program in my life. Um, you know, did well with the classes I needed to take. Got accepted. Uh, a lot of my good friends to, the, to this day I met that summer. Um, so you're talking 10, 15 years of, of friendship and, and kind of building bonds with folks. And I was like, you know what? This is this just feels right. I'm a big I'm a big person on kind of like feeling and, and vibe and um, just kind of just, you, you know, going with the with the flow and everything was just flowing in a positive direction. They had my major. I felt like, you know, HBCU was a great direction for me to go in. You know, you, you hear nothing but great things. Um I was like, you know what? Let me let me let me do this ride and and see what happens. So uh, it was kind of unconventional. It wasn't. I would. I would I'm not going to sit here and say it was on my radar from day one, from a certain age or, or anything like that. But you know, things work out in a certain way, and it, it, it just worked out perfectly for me. I mean, I I, I had a this conversation with um, a guest on our show, uh, Sin. We talked about alignment, and and sometimes even though it's not really on your radar. It, it it might just be exactly what you need, right? Mm-hmm. And what you did was you put yourself in the position t- to create that alignment. You know, had you placed some barriers in front of yourself or you said to yourself, hey, you know, maybe this isn't for me or I don't want to move that far south, you, you might have not had that opportunity to make those connections that you made and have those experiences, right? So uh, let me let me ask you this, Bryce. So what what when you step onto campus, what's your mindset? Are you thinking sports and entertainment? Are you thinking pre law? Like what, what what are you what are you looking to do at that time in your life? I was kind of just like a sponge. I knew I, I was cooking with grease because they had 
the program that I was interested in. So I was like, you know what? I have a base of, of direction of study here. I can learn marketing, sports business, entertainment, you know, and this is, you know, 07, 08, when obviously you look at right now, a lot of the stuff that's going on right now is not even in motion, you know, back then, you know, Instagram is right. just now starting to hit, you know, the, the airwaves, Twitter's just starting to get, you know, going, social media is, you know, really at the beginning, the, gen the, the genesis of everything. So, you know, it, it was more so, look, I'm at a position right now where there's a great foundation here. Um, and if I'm, and like you say, talk about alignment, my, my word for this year has been momentum. But I look back at, at certain moments of my career, my personal life of when I just followed the momentum and I followed it. There was, you know, the, the studies was there. The opportunity was, was ripe for growth. Um, so I didn't necessarily know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, you know, management and, and sports agency was kind of like at the forefront of, of my thinking without really knowing too much about it. Um, uh, but I knew I just wanted to be somewhere in the sports and entertainment industry. Okay. So what, what was that experience like in Virginia in comparison to New York? Was it a stark contrast or could you really immerse yourself into Virginia, you know, even though you come from a from a huge city with that moves a lot faster, right? Than that, I mean, in that city. I mean, the one thing was it Hampton. It's I don't want to say it's a bubble, but you know, you got the campus. It's a school town. You know, it's a college town. It's not like a big city where you step off campus. You know, I'm in the city, or I, I'm, I'm moving here. I'm shaking this. You know, you are in a campus environment, legit university environment where you know, you are immersed in everything. All types of culture is there. You can meet people, attend the games, events, um, you know, all, all types of, you know, folks that you're meeting from all across the country. And I, what I thought was dope was that, you know, I'm coming from New York. I was able to meet people that not only came from New York as well, but maybe folks that came from Atlanta and Georgia, or maybe folks that came from the West Coast, Southern, Northern California, Midwest, Cities that I, you know, didn't know too many black people lived, you know, they were there in, 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 in droves. Like the numbers were crazy. I met so many beautiful people um, from around the country. Uh, and that kind of expanded my mindset on just black culture as a whole. Because, you know, you being in New York, you, you can kind of have a tendency to think New York is the end all be all. Like, you know, there's nothing outside of New York worthwhile. But I was able mm -hmm. to meet people from all types of pockets of, of, of areas. I'm like, oh, they moving and shaking like New York too. Like big DC environments, you know, DMV, you know, the South, you know, Atlanta, the Mecca. That's where I really learned about Atlanta being the black Mecca. You know what I'm saying? Like in yeah, terms of yeah. what they got going on out there too. So that was a, a, a super fruitful experience um, to kind of see it and just be immersed in it. Cause really you, you kind of diving in on the, off the deep end and you're in this environment and you're able to kind of meet and build with folks that look like you from anywhere from East coast to West coast, North and South. So that, I thought that was dope. Yeah. So what, let me, so we kind of progressing through, right? So you're on campus, everything is, is, is happening for you. Um, what's, what was that transition from being a college student to your first professional gig? Like, like graduation, comes and goes what's your mindset as you're approaching professional life is it internships uh do you have a job fresh out the gate like what what's what's that look like for you yeah so i mean a lot of it back then was you know if you're going to be in the sports industry a lot of it was all right your first role is going to be in sales or something like that and i was like okay like i've, I've kind of heard this i was torn do i want to go to grad school straight out of school after graduation do i want to you know work and get experience first so I was like, you know what, let me get experience first. Let me see what's, you know, what's going on out here in the quote unquote real world. And I did get a, a sales role inside sales, working with, for an MLS club in the, in the New York area and couldn't stand it, man. I couldn't, I what, couldn't what stand it. What happened there? What? It, it just wasn't for me. I just didn't like the, the, the actual work of, of sales. Now I took away everything. I take, I always take a positive away from an experience, no matter how well it went, how long it was or whatever like that. So while I didn't like the the actual uh, process of 
picking up the phone and, and, and calling people and kind of going through that sales process for that particular role, I learned a lot of good habits. I learned how to get my elevator pitch right. I learned how to kind of connect with people that might not want to give me five minutes. And I can kind of peep, okay, I can't, I can tell that they don't want to give me five minutes, but let me get my piece out and then let me keep it moving. I learned like those, you know, uh, you know, you know, communi communication skills and tactics. And I think that was more, more influential to my professional development than any one particular role. So yeah, I did that, yeah. conquered it. And I was like, you know what? I got what I needed out of this. While it wasn't what I wanted to do, I realized, okay, cool. I could take a lot from this experience and build on it. There's always a lesson, man. You know, like even in those times that it sucks. I've, I've had some situations, man, that, that really sucked. You know, especially playing over here in Europe and, you know, getting paid late and, you know, you sign on to a team and the, the coach already has favorites and that type of stuff. It it sucked in the moment, but if you have that that glass half full mentality, you know, where you, you just exactly. say to yourself, okay, what, what was the lesson here? All right, maybe I need to put some more language in my contract to, you know, to put some safety barriers in there for me just in case this or that happens. Maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to do that. Right. So, how where where's that? What where does that mindset come from? Like, is that something that you were raised with, where maybe your parents or maybe a mentor of yours told you, "Hey, man, you you can you can feel the way that you feel, but you can't stay there." What, like, right. What where, where did that mindset come from? So it's a couple of things like that. That last part right there is definitely something I I, I try to you know stay true to in terms of like if I'm having a bad day, if I'm in a rut. Uh, if something's not going according to plan, I, I'm natural in terms of sitting in my my feelings. I'm not going to condense my feelings. I'm going to sit in it, but I'm like, you know what? 24, 48 hours max, I'm going to feel this. But after that, I got to I gotta keep moving. I need to figure out how to get to the next step, how to flip it. Um, but just always kind of, like you said, glass half full, like having a positive spin on things um, and just realizing, look, it, everything you know, to a certain extent is a means to an end. So while a certain role might not be for me, what could I get out of this role? What lessons can I learn and then apply it to the next one uh, or right. the next venture or the next business or, 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 or what have you, instead of just looking at, you know, opportunities and, you know, it, it's, a, it's a loss, it's an L. Like, nah, it's a lesson. I'm going to take it as a lesson and I'm going to learn from it, you know, and that's going to be my spin. I'm not going to let anyone dictate you know, fully how I'm going to feel um, without me doing something about it. So being natural, being in the moment, obviously, because it's, it's important to, you know, go through those motions and go through those feelings. But I'm going to take advantage of that situation. I'm going to make sure I'm learning from it so I could I could share with the next generation or, you know, someone else right. might be going through something like that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, man, it's just if you if you if you have that mindset that hey, there's going to another opportunity is there for me. You're not really going to fully get the most out of this next opportunity if you're stuck in the past, right? If you stuck, if you still holding harboring those 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 bad feelings for what you just experienced. I mean, listen, uh, I got that. I really got that information from my mom, man. Like you know, she used to always tell me, like, son. It's okay to be in that that dark place. It's okay, right. but you cannot live there. Right. If you live there, that's that that could be the means to your end. So, and it's all about the journey too. Like uh, you, you know, you got to take. You have to learn that. You know, this stop is not permanent. Like, or this current feeling is not permanent. Let me learn from it and continue on with my journey. So I could kind of reach another place, another destination that I can look back, like, you know, I learned from that. Like I, I finessed that back then, or this helped me now. Like, you know, it, it's always it's a positive mindset. Yeah, it's all a part of the story. It's all a part bro. of the story. All man. part of the story. It's, yeah. So so Bryce, I, I was I was, you know, doing 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 my research. And man, I saw that you 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 were working um with the CIAA, man, in in promoting the C, the the CIAA tournament actually building that brand up to make it one of the 
especially back then when it was in Charlotte, uh, right. one of the premier stops in sports and entertainment in the whole country. Like you, like everyone had to be there. What would, what? First of all, explain to the people that don't know, because I, I we we have some European listeners. Explain to the people that don't know what the CIAA experience is. Listen, um, that well, for one, you took it back because that that literally, I think, and I just really thought about that. That was my first perfect sports industry professional role. Like I was an intern. That was my first internship in, in college. Um, mm. And for those that don't know, the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, um, one of the, the most premier HBCU focused basketball tournaments uh, in the country, uh, with a lot of you know name brand schools. Uh, a lot of historic programs. Um, and it used to be in Charlotte. Uh, shout out to Charlotte, North Carolina, great city. Um, and, you know, now it's, it's in Baltimore now, right? Yeah, they moved it to Baltimore. It's, yeah, they man. moved it to just Baltimore. I was to talk about that. It they moved the same, it to Baltimore. Man. Yeah, so I, I'm sure it's a little bit different right now, but I'm glad to see it's still it's still rolling. But, but yeah, that was like my first my first foray into the industry, man, as an intern. And, and I look back and I'm like, damn, like times has changed. Like I remember I was cutting up you know, newspapers to kind of, you know, see clippings about what was going on, like with the type of the PR that the tournament was getting, um, being, you know, my, my first time in Charlotte, remember seeing a uh, cookout, going to cookout the first time, with a couple of my classmates, yeah, buddy. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, Charlotte was, it was a good time, man. And it was definitely a, uh, it was a great experience because like I said, it's one of those HBCU, you know, temple events that you know still still going still 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 rocking strong so um just to kind of be a part of that and kind of being on the ground as like a marketing intern and, and just learning yo this is what a major event looks like this is how you put it together this is how it's run um and you know looking to see where i'm at now we started off talking about all-star weekend I'm like damn i done we done came you know a long way we done did some stuff you know we done did some stuff you know so yeah just that 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 definitely was a great uh you know moment a great semester for myself just to be able to say i was a part of that um because like you said when you look at stuff and, and things change now it's in uh it's in baltimore you know i could say that yo i was there in charlotte man like that was my first experience in charlotte i, I did that you know listen it, man i uh so I, I i a piece of my crew were active in charlotte during that time and they were they were live. Every time CI came, it was like table service, bottle service, day party here, night party here, pregame at the house. It was just a full experience for them, right? So while I'm hearing all of these stories, I went to school in Salisbury, North Carolina, which is like an hour and a half outside of Charlotte uh, going north. Probably like an hour and a half or so. Um, I, I've never been to CI. Wow, okay. I've never been, and I mean, yeah, it was. Re we're really like a, an hour outside of Charlotte, so it's not really like a crazy drive, right, for me to get there. But this is um, conference tournament season, and for on one side of it, it's like, dang, man, I never got the CIAA experience. But on the other side, it was like while I was in college, we were winning. So that's the re that was the reason. Right. Like, that's why he was there. Exactly. Yeah. Like we competed for a champ, you know, conference championship and all that type of stuff. And then once I came overseas, like that was out the window. Cause, you know, no October, November. Well, CI is no in it's like the no, winter. Like the, yeah. So it's like time. February. Right, yeah. right, right. So yeah, around this time, uh is is usually when the, the tournament kicks off and I'm always over here. I'm always in season. So mm -hmm. Once it moved to Baltimore, it was like, okay, that's out the window for me. But I would always hear, the, hear those stories, man. And it's, it's, but I've never talked to someone who was actually in the mix, you know, building the tournament and actually seeing all of these people coming in and coming out and setting up events here and alumni events and that type of stuff, right? So, yeah, so it's interesting to hear your perspective on it. Even though you had a short, you know, time with the program, it's, uh, Nah, man, I just, yeah, I wanted to bring that up, man, because I, you know, it's legendary. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you, you took it back. You took it back for me because I was like, wow, that's, that was the first, that, that was the first iteration, man. That was the first step, you know, so that, that right. always brings me good memories, too. No doubt.
So you you've had some 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 pretty big milestones in in your personal in your professional uh, career, uh, Bryce, and we're gonna lead up to the big one that we talked about. You know, what 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 did those next steps in your professional life look like as you started to progress up to eventually Body Armor, which was a company that you had worked for uh, for a while? What 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 was that time like? Just kind of figuring out what this path is gonna look like. Yeah, no, uh, figuring out is is the best the best phrase I I can say. Like you know, sports is is such an interesting industry because it's not like law or uh, you know uh, the 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 the, med- the medical career where hey you got to get your bachelor's, law school three years, medical school four years. Like you could kind of bounce around, and there's really no blueprint to kind of get into where you go just because there's so many corners of the sports and, and marketing industry. It's kind of like you know, really just specializing in, you know, what you're, you're passionate about, what your interest is in. So, you know, a lot of that was, was figuring it out that time kind of jumping around to different roles and, and, and really myself, uh, downloading a lot of different information. So had an opportunity to kind of do uh, advertising, um, at NBC and, and kind of be with the big company there and, and understand, you know, multicultural marketing, um, or at Telemundo. Um, I had some stops where, uh, you know, doing contract work for a marketing agency um, and we were working with Nike. That was like one of the big clients that we had helping put together events for them. Um, and that was kind of a, a different foray for me into, in terms of like event activation um, and, you know, connecting with people for uh, large events on, on the East Coast and in New York. So I'm getting exposure um, into all these different uh, corners of the industry, but still not really sure what I wanted to do, not really sure where my final destination or where the direction I wanted to go in. So I had a, actually had a, a couple of friends that went to grad school and that one in particular that, that also was a Hampton alum and went to Georgetown Sports Industry Management Program, the grad school program down in DC. And, you know, even going back to, to school when I was graduating, I was like, you know, I just want to get some experience first. I don't really want to jump back in school again. Let me at least get some experience and just figure out what I want to do. I ended up going to, you know, Georgetown and doing that for a year uh, and, you know, getting grad school experience and kind of just fine tuning my focus into like marketing and partnerships and branding. And, you know, that was the big step right there. That was like, all right, let me retool, you know, all about storytelling again. So I now can come back and, and tell the story about working and then going to, going back to school and then coming back into the workforce um, so that was the big thing right there about storytelling, just kind of figuring out the direction I wanted to go in. But I wanted to, you know, just bolster up my resume a little bit more with, you know, some of those different stops that I took. Yeah, I, I, and I definitely understand kind of going back to the drawing board on your approach because I'm I'm actually in the same situation, leaving professional sports. You know, I I had a path, but at the end of the day, when you're being realistic about it, you're not going to play for 40 years, man. Right, father time you know, undefeated. Yeah, man. And I really, I, I decided to stop playing full time because I knew I didn't want basketball to be my identity. I wanted to be something more than that. I wanted to get out into the space that I'm in now, talking with really interesting people, having conversations, making connections, expanding my connect, my, my network. It's hard to do that when you're boxed into the basketball space, especially if you're not 100% into, I don't know, coaching or becoming a GM or scouting. Mm-hmm. You know, I, that's not where my heart is. So, I so said, you know what? Like now, I'm at that. I'm at the. I'm at the drawing board now. All right. So, what is it going to be? Should I go back to school to beef up, beef up my resume, or or am I going to do it like I'm doing it now on the fly? Like getting this, like I'm learning everything right now, like editing and building a show. Uh, Mastering the craft. Executing, exactly. Executing on 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 different concepts. So I'm doing it on the fly. Of course, you know, going back to school is something that's on my mind because I will be able to really f- focus in on one specific space and say, okay, this is what I'm doing. But right now I just kind of have my hands in everything. So I'm at that, I'm at a fork in the road right now. Like, what am I, you know, what's, what should I do? You know, but, uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, the reason why this show is great, Bryce, and you know, I don't want to be too long with the reason why, why I love doing this show is because I get to talk to 
successful people such as yourself and a lot of people you would probably even say what's success right i have these goals you know this and that but you know for me you've had so many different experiences i mean nbc telemundo mls like you you've been in so many different spaces man it's just like i can only imagine the different experiences you've had just kind of spanning all over these different places i mean it's it's just crazy to hear man so i'm yeah it's this this is a really interesting conversation to me man no yeah. doubt no doubt i agree i appreciate yeah. that so so we we were leading into the body armor uh conversation right what how did you get to body armor which was <clears throat> at one point especially in its inception of it was a big deal right right um, yeah, so it's f funny we talk about connections and, and relationships at, at different po points in your life. I actually just came back from grad school, uh, got back to New York. Um, a buddy of mine that I went to Hampton with, you know, I was back in town, wanted me to um, come with him to a Knicks game, invited me out. And uh, he had a colleague that I didn't know, uh, didn't go to Hampton. Did, but Did the Knicks but, win that night? You know what? I'm gonna say yes because I felt like it was a good night. So I'm, I'm gonna say the Knicks did win. That's why. That's why I asked. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say the Knicks did win. So that it was just a good night overall. Um, but right. yeah, so I, I was able to connect with with uh, a college friend. Met met someone new there. Uh, one of his friends got got introduced to them, um, and it was on some oh, okay, cool, like dope. Can tell that you cool, cool, my homeboy. Let's keep in touch. You know, I know you're looking to kind of get back into the industry. You know, here's my information. You know, you know, hit me up. Now, normally, when people say that, it's you might hear from them. They might hit you back. You know, they might, you know, take one call with you and then you got to track them down and you never hear from them again. But that's what they call that industry contact. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to shout out my boy Don, Don and Ryan. They they were some stand up individuals. Don, uh, you know, always, um, you know, gave me the time. You know, what? even if it was five minutes, always respond to an email always, you know, respond to a text, whether or not it was something that, you know, hey, I got a lead on this or, you know, hey, look at this or here's an idea, always responded. Um, and then it was just one time where uh, we, throughout that moment, we had a, a good group of, um, you know, guys in the industry throughout marketing, wherever, different different roles in, in sports. And we all kind of kept in contact, whether it's going to different events it's just staying in contact with folks, sending email updates. Hey, I'm moving over to here. Here's my new email. Are we looking for this? Looking for that? He sent the email out. I was like, yo, I'm moving over to Body Armor. Um, you know, let me know if anyone is is interested in learning more about the roles and, and just the company overall. It's, it's new, it's up and coming. You know, all I knew about was Kobe and I got the jersey right there. So like I knew Kobe was involved. Um, I knew Harden yeah. was involved to a certain extent. <clears throat> and um, I was like, you know what? Let me... Let me just try and have a conversation. Let me try and learn a little bit more. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yo, I ain't got nothing cooking. I'm feeling myself. I'm thinking I'm supposed to roll right into something right after grad school. Very humbling couple of months for me after the, after this as well. Ooh, wow. And I'm like, you know what? No, I got nothing cooking. Uh, but, you know, things line up when they're supposed to line up. And, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to, to get an interview there. Uh, in, in, in a partnership uh, manager role, and you know the rest was was history. So uh, definitely, the power of connections is is how I was able to land that role there, and and just kind of just making sure that you're always um, you know staying close to people and just tapping in, not even just for jobs or work, but just just being cool with folks and, and just you know just just checking in and just kind of just you know building a quality relationships. Man, I have a I have a friend of mine who. Um... He's actually running his own um, uh, company right now. Uh, he worked for ESPN for a while, and uh, he branched off, and now he's doing his own thing um, in management and um, brand management, and you know, just he's 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 all over the place. But um, I had a conversation with him, and he said, uh, "Rob, uh, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is." First of all, you know, I, I, I'm a hard worker and, you know, a lot of things have aligned for me in a way that helped me see a, a very clear path. But he said, man, you have to master the follow up. 
He's like a lot of people, they they get that foot in the door, they get that opportunity, but they never follow up. And he said, one of the things that I've done beyond any anything of my own doing in terms of a specific role was I mastered the follow up. He said, I met I met a lot of people over over this time and I always followed up. He said, sometimes it didn't work. Sometimes, like you said, one conversation, we out of here. But he said the the ones that allowed me to have that that time, whether it was five minutes or thirty minutes or, or a coffee or whatever, once I once I had that, once I mastered the follow up, it there was always something good after it. So he he advised me to build that skill on top of all of this other stuff that I'm doing. But he said, you don't be afraid to actually follow up on that that person that gave you that card. Or that person that said, "Hey, shoot me an email on Monday morning." Right. He said, "Just, you just do it, because you never know what will come of it." And for you, you, you followed through, you followed up, you created a connection, and then boom, now you're in body armor, not knowing. I mean, it's a startup company. People are, you know, some some superstars are investing in it. The, you know, it's it's starting to be become a big time thing. We're seeing commercials, we're seeing advertisements social media is booming right so it's that timing was perfect mm -hmm. yep. social media booms the investment comes into body armor and it just met right at the same time and it just went crazy it was everywhere what is it like in the office seeing this become what it's becoming like is you you are now becoming a titan in the sports drink industry out of nowhere how what does it feel like in the building you know, one word that um, you hear a lot in, in kind of like the tech space with, uh, you know, brands that are kind of like emerging and, and, and startup environments is, is disruptive. And and that's exactly ah, what we were preaching. Yeah. That's exactly what we were preaching as well, man. And it, yeah. it, it fit, you know, it, it fit with what the brand was doing. We were disruptive in the industry um, in terms of just shaking up what was the quote unquote status quo with the, some of the brands that were already out there in terms of like sports drinks um, and stuff like that. So we were doing something different. Um, like you said, you know, in terms of uh, the, the roster that we had, the investments that we had from across the, across the board. And me, again, like going back to, to day one and the upbringing and being a sports fan, you know, in New York, it's, all right, it's basketball, it's NBA, okay, NFL, you know, football is kind of a thing out here too. Baseball, okay, cool. But now I'm emerging into myself to learn to be an expert in not only those, the, the big four, but also I'm working, I'm leading, uh, you know, partnerships that we have with, with uh, drivers in NASCAR. Um, so I'm yeah. learning about teams in NASCAR. I'm learning about the UFC and, and mixed martial arts and, and that behemoth, that Goliath. Um, oh, yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. The W That's another NBA, disruptor. Tennis, all these different disruptive brands and, and leagues. Um, in, in, in hockey, you know, all this stuff that I'm learning about, I'm like, oh, I got to be an expert because I'm working with, uh, you know, Mike Trout's on the roster. I got to know my baseball. Uh, okay, Mookie Betts. Okay, now we got, you know, NFL guys. We got NBA guys. Like, I need to know, I need to know all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I need to know um, all this information, you know, so I could be that expert in the game. So I could apply it. And I'm thinking – five, 10 years down the road. I'm like, okay, body armor, my time, I'm not going to be here forever. So let me take this information, this knowledge that I'm getting and being able to say, oh yeah, I did this. I, I did Daytona, Daytona 500 a couple of times. This is before I'm doing All-Star Weekend. I'm in Daytona. I'm in Florida. I'm at one of the biggest sporting events also. I'm learning That's about basically golf. All-Star uh, All -Star, All -Star Weekend. That's for, the All-Star uh, Weekend NASCAR. For, for NASCAR. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm I'm being very well versed in in everything, and and that's kind of like what I, I try to hang my hat on, just being, you know, collecting these diverse experiences, um, in these moments. Whether or not I did it once or twice, cool. But I could say I did it. I could shed some light on it. I could. I'm essentially an expert now because I've done it. Um, so that's that was kind of the biggest thing that I was trying to take away. Let me absorb as much as possible. Because now I can legitimately say, 
I'm an expert in this space, or I did this. Like, here are the receipts. Like, I'm not just blowing smoke, you know, because it's easy to do that these days. It's easy to, you know, kind of be on the sidelines or not even in the building and just try and, you know, be an expert or something. So I think that's what I, I wanted to make sure I, I downloaded it in myself so I could always try and stand out. That was my edge. Okay. So what, so what about this? You're working at Body Armor. The, the, the company is now immersing itself into uh, sports, the sports and entertainment culture. The brand is everywhere new flavors are popping up and then this big acquisition happens what is the what's the feeling like in the building when this acquisition is 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 cooking you know it's <clears throat> like th that that was massive you know the 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 figure that came out what what's did you hear it early on or was it just kind of sprung on you like you come in the office one day and everybody's you know, looking like someone stole their, you know, their goldfish or something. Right, right. So so that was always the, you know, in terms of like goals and stuff like that, we would always preach like this is our this is our North Star. Like if we do this, this is our championship. So that was always the the direction that we wanted to go in. That was the the ideas behind any marketing campaign, any ad that you saw on TV, any new flavor, any new partnership, like Besides all the business rationale behind everything, it was we're doing this so we could be more attractive for an acquisition or we could be more attractive for this or new kids that don't know about us that playing youth sports will know about us. Uh, 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 an athlete, um, you know, that's in the NBA now with a million followers that, you know, doesn't know about sports drink or a, a, a college athlete, student athlete that's learning about the industry and learning about training and hydration and the best things to put in their body. Oh, snap. This is a new fan. This is a new consumer. That was always the, the North star. So when we finally were able to kind of cross that finish line, it was like, Oh shit, we did this. Like we did it. We, we did yeah. it. Like this is, this is what we was working hard for. It's almost like, you know, you kind of work hard and, and, and you're going through different things and it's like, Okay, yeah, I know I'm doing this to, to eventually cross this line, but you don't see it at that moment because you you're in the trenches, like you're going through the day to day. You know, you're learning, just like how you said you're learning about the camera work and the lighting and, and, and editing and all that stuff. You molding your skill set right now, like, and then you look up in a year, like, yeah, I, I got I got this. This is easy because yeah. you was in the trenches learning it before so all the marketing plans and ideas and the things that we were doing you know we were busting our tail knowing that one that it knowing that it was good work but also knowing hey this is an effort to reach the finish line to cross the finish line and once we able to do it it was like wow we did this like what it was almost like what's next like let's rejoice what's what's next what's the next thing <laughs> Because now yeah. you feel, you know, you feel like, okay, anytime you complete a task that is monumental, um, you're like, okay, wow, we did this. Now, wh who's to say we can't do something else? Um, and I think that's kind of the, 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 big, the big thing, too. That was a, a great takeaway. So what was, the, uh, what was the celebration like? Was it Moet bottles all around the office? Was it a, a, a vacation, paid vacation? What was the celebration like? It's it's funny enough. We still we still was definitely working right after that, but it definitely was some celebration. <laughs> it, was, it was some food. We definitely eat good. Um, it, we definitely uh, you know party hard, work hard, um, and yeah, like it, it was a lot of that. It, it, everything that you just said, it was definitely a combination of that. A lot of rejoicing um, because you know you working with people three four years. And, you know, after a while you work with folks, they become more than coworkers. They become, you know, friends and colleagues and, and stuff like yeah. that. Like these Stay moments. Family to us in a sense. Exa exactly. And, and really, you know, just like anything else, like playing ball and being on the team and winning the chip or, or, or setting a record, like there's certain stuff that you're always going to be forever, you know, connected to people for. And, you know, I might not talk to everybody like, you know, all every day, but it's like 
whenever we link up, whenever we speak, it's all love because we always go back to, yeah, we did that. Like, this is how we connected. And, you know, it's just like anything else when you when you do it. You're on a team, you win a chip, you forever connected to that team. You know what I'm saying? I was like, just about to say that. You forever connected to that team. No matter Obviously, what. no matter what, people do the different things. Um, they branch off and, and, and they're able to kind of, um, you know, leverage opportunities. But, you know, you're, you're, you're forever connected to, to those group of people that you were able to uh, accomplish, you know, ultimate success with. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this, Bryce. Um, and and we, we, we are now in the present. What does this phrase mean to you? What does calling your own shots mean? to you man so that's definitely like a, a a personal mantra right now uh and to me it's you know controlling your controlling your destiny as much as possible and you know taking you know grabbing the bull by the horn so call your own shots i, I got it on got it on right now the shot caller so that's me building something that i want to see i want to see a sports culture uh, you know, platform that's more diverse, that's talking about the sports business, digital content. Um, I want that to be a thing. That's an ethos. And it's not just with the business, that's just with life. Um, if there's something that I aspire to do, you know, I want to call my own shots. I want to figure out how I could do that. Um, I want to learn, you know, how to build and, and, and how to put myself in, in certain situations to, you know, be a leader in this space. Um, so it, it's business. It's professional. It's it's a it's a brand opportunity. Um, it's it's a it's a way of life. It's a calling, um, and I think it transcends to to any industry. Um, you know anything that folks are trying to do. Yeah, and I mean this is a that's a great segue to the the brand, the shot callers. Talk to us about that part of your life and how you got to this point and what it what it means and. What what you're doing in in that space? Yeah, so the shot callers is a uh, is, is is a multi platform uh, sports media content. You know, so it's focusing on sports business, um, sports information, sports media, uh, and then also growing to do digital content. Um, and obviously, there are, are a couple of um, you know platforms that are out there right now that are really highlight based and highlight focused. But I want to get back to the core things. I want to make sure that the information um, about the industry in a space that is, you know, predominantly, uh, you know, uh, ran by, by folks that look like you and I, just to make sure that we get the storytelling correct, you know, that there's more than sure. just folks playing basketball and, and, and playing NFL and stuff like that. Like we're behind the scenes. We're, we're doing business, you know, we're running leagues, we're running teams. Um, you know, a lot of businesses are, are, are being created right now. A lot of brands are being created. A lot of folks that we see that are handling their business on the court, they're also great entrepreneurs as well. Um, these men and women yep. are doing dope things. They're venture capitalists. Um, you know, they're creating their own media companies, their own media platforms. Uh, so this is stuff that at least me personally, I wanted to see more of. I wanted to see the storytelling to reflect all of that. Um, and I think <clears throat> when you talk about storytelling, it's all about the platforms that are there. Um, so we can't always get mad when we don't hear a certain story if you know we there's a lack of platforms that are catered to you know being truthful about the information that's out there. That's talking about all the good stuff that you know Rich Paul is doing. Not as a sports agent but okay is he doing something in the community okay cool is he building this is he building that like you know you look at all these athletes that had hell of a runs carmelo anthony chris paul they're doing great stuff off the court you know whether they're right. venture capitalists uh they're starting wine brands podcasts media you know they're doing other things and it's important that the storytelling uh you know continues to reflect that but also Educate the next generation of folks that are in interested in sports, culture, entertainment. You know, when I was coming up, there wasn't too many people that could talk to me directly about how to get into the industry. A lot of it was kind of just figuring it out on our own. Um, right, so right. if there's a platform that is there that can kind of educate 
in terms of like the current events that's going on in the industry from partnerships, marketing, sponsorships, all this stuff, and has a has a unique voice behind it, has a, you know, has a unique angle, a diverse platform, a diverse angle, you know, I think that's gonna encourage more people to be interested in the industry. And they're gonna look up and they're gonna have examples of, you know what, I saw the shot call. Like I love the brand. Like I love the idea of calling my own shots. So I want to go to school. I want to do this. I want to invest. I want to learn. Um and you know taking you know just taking control of that situation and really just learning and sharing the information because I think that's the best way to kind of educate you know any group of people. Yeah, I I, I think what you're doing is dope, man. And I of course I've I've checked out um, the content that you're putting together, and it's important that the stories are told in the right way. And some of this has been spearheaded through podcasting and um, you know more than an athlete and all of these things. Right. But I, I feel like there's not an, there's still not enough of these stories getting out. Like all of the, a lot of the entertainers and the players that we admired in a sense, when we came up, we didn't know anything about them except, you know, maybe them lashing out in the interview here or there or popping up in the newspaper or what they did on the court or the field or whatever. That's all we knew. You know, we we saw that stuff, but we never understood why at this time or that time they had some trouble. You know, it might have stemmed from the way that they came up as children. They might they probably had terrible childhoods, but we would never know it because all the media does is just put out the worst of them. Well, let's go back to the root. Let's let's try to help this person kind of overcome those traumas that they went through in their lives. But we never know about this stuff until right now. So it's right. interesting, you know, it's just, it's important that, that people like yourself and, you know, other people just come along and tell these stories. It's, 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 it's necessary. And it also makes sports and entertainment, it just makes it a lot more wholesome and it, and it makes you feel a little bit more for the person that you're rooting for or that you're booing in a sense. Facts. And, and, and you touched on it in terms of like, Understanding, yeah, there's there's other platforms that are out there, and there's there's always welcoming for for more. There's always should be a diverse, uh, you know, variety out there. Like it doesn't just have to be one monopoly and you know, all that stuff. No. So it's great mm -mm. that other platforms that are out there, um, and it's good just to kind of have give people options because one platform might might not be for for you and I, but it might be for someone else, so on and so forth. So. I think that's the, that's an, an important note um, to kind of showcase for folks as well. Yeah. So, Rice, like for you, uh, when we were talking, we were we were talking about your approach to just going into you know certain roles, and you you your mindset in these roles, or you you approach it in a very strong way, saying that. Um, I'm going here and I'm going to just do the best that I can, but you always keep a, a an open mindset. Like what, where, where does that come from? Because a lot of us, we get tunnel vision and we, I think, you know, maybe the old school way is like, Hey, I'm going to work with this company for 40 years. I'm going to retire here. But nowadays, you know, things are, are changing. What, what do you, what do you feel is your connection with this new mindset that, that approaches different roles within, with an open field of vision like what, what what's your what's your approach on that and and where did it come from yeah i mean i think my biggest thing you know my, my parents have definitely always been uh involved in time in terms of like motivating me and, and keeping me um with a positive mindset my pops in particular you know always told me look wherever you at doesn't have to be forever like you're not attached to this to this role past a certain period of time so you know to a certain extent, use them just as much as, you know, they're using you, you know, learn as much right. as you can while, while there to, you know, build on the skills that, that I need to build, sharpen, sharpen the iron that I need to. Um, and then, you know, I, I think timing is crazy because with, with your career, it's like, all right, I'm taking on these roles to kind of learn. I want to learn about marketing. I want to learn about branding. I want to learn about being a consultant. 
And then after a certain point, you could continue to do those same things and, and find roles that um, that that puts you in a space where you're able to kind of flex what you're doing. Um, and then there's another aspect where it's like, you know, I collected all these experiences. Now maybe I want to do something else where I can showcase everything that I'm, I learned throughout my time and I want to carve out my own lane and this is what I want to do. So yeah. I've, I've always kind of looked at at both of those options because after you get experience, it's like, all right, cool. Now, now you're the prize because you've gathered all these experiences and you've put in the work and now it's like, okay, cool. Like what's next? What do I want to tackle next? What's going to help me continue to develop and grow personally, professionally? What are some of my passion points? Um, and I think that's something that now that I've been able to been fortunate enough to, to gather so much experience, um, now it's like, okay, cool. Where, where's my passion lie? Like, how do I give back? Like, how do I educate the next generation? Cause that's a big thing for me too. You know, cause I'm looking back at it. Okay. I'm like, I ain't no spring chicken no more. Like, you know, I, I've hit a certain <laughs> space where now it's like, all right, I need to start giving back to folks because now people that remind me myself when I was at Hampton or, you know, coming up was, damn, what's sports marketing? Like, how you get into that? I'm like, oh, snap. Like, folks are really interested in not just my story, but the industry and how to get into it and how to maneuver. And, you know, you want to give people those those gems that you probably didn't have, but you learned, you know, so they could, they could flourish. And, and that's that's kind of another another big part, too. Yeah, and I mean, you, you are, you're an adjunct professor as well. Correct, like you, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Like, so, so, so speak on that a little bit, man. Like you, you're a professor. So you, you've gained all of these experiences and then you come to a, to a place where you can actually like give this information to young students directly. How did you come into that space and how did you get out of the, cause they, you, you, you're stepping out of your comfort zone. You know, it's one thing, to, to see a young person on, on campus and you just kind of strolling and we having a conversation, but it's another one when you're setting up a syllabi, you know, syllabi, you know, you, you work right. with syllabi and you, you know, you, you're really structuring a learning experience. Like what, what how do you get there? So again, another kind of like power of, uh, of just staying in contact with folks and, and kind of building, building relationships. So I finished Georgetown, um, the, there's a there's a, a director that's where I'm at now that I got connected with through a, a mutual friend. Um, and we didn't cross paths when I was at grad school, but it wasn't until after that where I kind of had an interest in, in just, you know, learning about working with students and youth and, and even teaching in, in the industry, sports, sports marketing and stuff like that. Um, always kept in contact. Um he lets me know that he he has a role at, at NYU or he transitioned to a role from Georgetown to NYU. Like, oh, okay, dope. Like you're in the city. Let's, let's catch up. Let's, you know, let's connect, let's get some lunch or whatever. Pandemic hits. Um, so then everybody's inside. You kind of, you know, you're not really doing those same type of connections as you would to go get lunch or, or you know, a drink right. or something like right. that. Everything's right. virtual. And there's only so much that you could really build organically, you know, through emails and phone calls and texts and stuff like that. Um, and then just kind of like the power of time and max, I don't think I would have been able to do this based on how busy I was at body armor, but literally, you know, I transitioned out of body armor. Uh, I, you know, I get a new role right now, consulting and, um, this opportunity comes up and I'm like, oh, wow. Like this is divine timing. Like, you know, it's once a week started off virtual for the first two semesters and now it's, you know, in, in person, but you know, okay. that came to life because he literally hit me up out the blue after we had built the relationship over the last, you know, years, couple of years. And he's like, hell man, I got this, you know, I got the sports marketing class with the grad, grad program. This is it. This mind you, this is in like late November, early December. He hits me with this email. Yeah, so the semester has already started. This is for, this is starting in January. So I'm like, okay, okay like it's a quick, <laughs> It's a quick yeah. turnaround. It's the it's the alley oop that you always look for, and you never can control what the timing looks like. Yeah, we was yeah. like, yo, this is definitely late November, early December. Like, hey man, I got this role. It's yours if you want it. Your name's on it. It's in January. It's a quick turnaround. Let me know. I'm like, damn, it's quick. I'm like, this is what I wanted to do. So let me let me learn. 
let me learn how to do this. And, learn you know, you know, learn on the fly. I'm, it's virtual for the first two semesters. So we doing it like this virtual, you know, you kind of, you know, teaching and what it's, it's, it's me. He gave me the, the reins to kind of figure out how I want to do it. And just how I kind of talk with, with, with friends and, and family about, you know, sports and industry and, and current events. And, you know, even with colleagues, a couple of my friends at industry too, where we talk, go back and forth about the latest marketing campaign or, or, or branding or, or partnership. I'm able to talk that same stuff in class with people that are interested in getting to the industry um, because they're interested in, you know, not only my story, but hey, I'm pivoting from finance into sports or I, I know about sports, but I don't know anything about the sports industry or sports business. I'm trying to learn about it. You know, tell us about body or tell us about this. Tell us about that. So I'm literally able just to kind of share my, you know, you know, I'm a big Jay-Z fan, like, where, where, you know, where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. that angle, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm able to talk about all of that, my passion points, man. And, you know, it, it, it's been a fruitful experience, man, definitely. So you giving me a master class right now, man. I, maybe I need to sign up for Listen, you get, we, we all sure. getting credits right now, man. We, we all learning. I'm telling you, man. I'm, we all I'm locked it. in too, bro. I should, I should, <laughs> I should have grabbed my my notepad. Man. Oh man, yeah. no man, but it's but it's really dope, man. To to hear you pivot in that direction. It, a lot of a lot of us, we ha we have the. So I I think about it like this, Bryce, and I don't, I don't want to get too far off track, but just think of where we are in this world now and all of this inf we have so much information that's uh at our fingertips and we're starting to see some of the people that we admired in sports and entertainment they're starting to pass they're starting to you know they're starting to die right and a lot of these people are they they they, they were older and they didn't really understand that this space that we're in now where we're sharing our story so through these people's lives, they've gathered all of this information and they've traveled the world and they've been to this concert. They've had dinner with this person, but they never got to tell their story. So when they leave us, they leave libraries of information that would be useful to not only, of course, their immediate circle, their family, friends, et cetera, et cetera, but a lot of people like myself who, who will forever be learning you know I'm, I'm always trying to get nuggets of information throughout my day you know even on the days that i'm not you know the most energetic i I love those nuggets of information and when we lose people who don't really understand the importance of those stories that information is just gone so the fact that you're stepping forward and saying i'm i'm sharing this information is in, in a formal setting is 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 really cool, man. It's really cool to hear. Student yeah. of the game. That's what that's you know, always always being a student of the game. Yeah, for sure. So so Bryce, man, we get we're getting towards the end of the episode, man. Um This is we're approaching the manifestation part of the show, man. Manifestation is big on the show. And uh, you know, I love to hear, you know, people like you. I, I love to hear you dream big because I feel like, well, at least so I won't feel like I'm the only crazy one in the world, right? Right, right. <laughs> so I, I like to hear that. But before we get to the manifestation part of the show, what's next for you? What's next for the shot callers? Yeah, just whatever whatever you can that's not uh, locked behind a um, non-disclosure. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, it, it's continuing to 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 build out. You know, my my baby. Uh, you know, to kind of to to bring it to 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 the forefront. I obviously, want to make sure that you know we're getting in front of as many you know new audiences as as possible. Um, there's so many people that are are super interested in in sports, uh, but also you know the business of sports is, is such a you know not only is it, is it a lucrative. Uh, you know, industry right now, but, you know, like you said, it's power of information and, you know, being able to kind of talk about partnerships or, or, or marketing and different branding opportunities of what the folks that we see, the men and women that we see so often um, in their respective field of play, 
you know, they're successful there, but they're also successful with, you know, other, other ventures and opportunities that they're doing. So, you know, just being able to kind of be that, that platform that shares sports culture, sports marketing and, and business news, uh, and then eventually graduate to, you know, producing digital content and, and doing more visuals. You know, I think it's important that that become the platform that people gravitate to when they want to, you know, look for the, you know, their daily consumption of, of, of information in the sports world, you know, so right. it's continuing to kind of build it out. You know, I got, I got some merch that, you know, going to be dropping quarterly to kind of help brand uh, and continue to, to align that with, you know, people see that they see the visual, they're like, okay, you, you, you hip, you, you a shot call, you know, what's going on. That, yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? I need that nugget too, uh, Bryce. I need, Ex- I need, I, I have so many dreams about this merch, man. Like, uh, you know, but it's just getting a ball rolling. But yeah, but listen, going, like, man, like you know. said, like you said, it, it, and it's just one, it's one thing at a time. And you know, I, I have a tendency to, tr- you know, to do a, a bit more than than necessary. So now it's like, all right, this is like the next iteration. Let me let me focus on what I could do, what I could handle right now, and then as we continue to grow, um, you know, I can focus on on larger opportunities. Um, obviously being able to speak on a platform such as this to kind of spread the vision is, is, is super helpful and, and, and even just share my story overall, hopefully um, can inspire the next generation, someone else that's coming up that's uh, that's interested in the sports industry um, and marketing and just learning more about that too. Um, you know, I, I'm just trying to continue to, to be a, you know, a beacon of, 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 of light in that sense with this, uh, this, this nugget that I'm su- su- super passionate about, you know? No doubt. Yeah, man. So now we at the, the the manifestation part of of the show, and uh, usually when we come to this part, uh, Bryce, I, I I just want to know what what type of things you manifest, and that could be personal, professional, or both. If that's something that you choose to do, what's the ideal situation for Bryce to run? What what what's that perfect scenario look like for you? Man, it's, it's funny. I think about this all the time, uh, and I, I kind of change it. Or I move the goalposts a little bit, but a lot of it's focused on this. Um, you know, I never really had a uh, an entrepreneurial, you know, background, or I, you know, I'm starting all these businesses and stuff like that. But you know, just gathering various experiences and and just learning through throughout my professional stops. You know, I'm like, you know, I've been able to you know put together a nice story so far. Um, and then obviously you, you, you be a part, you're, you're a part of certain, um, events in life that, you know, you see other people that started stuff, um, and you see the possibilities that are there and it's like, all right, like what's to say that this, this kid from Brooklyn can't start this media platform, um, that's focused on sports, sports culture and entertainment. Um, so, you know, and just kind of seeing how far it goes. Cause it's like people, and not to say that you bank everything on what other people say, but you'll get a good temp check on if you're going in a, in a good direction or what you're working on kind of makes sense or, you know, it's mm-hmm. picking up steam. Like people be like, mm-hmm. yo, you kind of you got something like this. Yo, Rob's podcast is kind of dope, man. I, I see what you're doing. Yeah. So yeah. you get a couple of those and then it's like, all right, like people just, you know, just saying stuff to support. But then it's like you talking to people that don't know you from a can of paint. And then you get that you get you perfect your your elevator pitch, and it's like okay, this is dope, this is dope idea. Okay, like let me let me learn more about this. And then when you get a lot of those, it's like all right, like I need to put on, like I need to. It's time. It's 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 someone in at Hampton right now that's that's interested in the sports industry. It's someone in Brooklyn that's that that ha- doesn't know my story or just just saw maybe I'm from Brooklyn from New York and they like you know what that I'm I'm kind of interested in learning more about it. So, I'm more in that mindset about you know what there's some people watching. There's some people okay. that's yeah. It's some people it's not just about me no more. And yeah. I think that's my biggest thing. You know, I had a um I think I did like a post. I think I did like a, a all-star like recap post, something like that. And and one of my younger cousins who's in like high school right now, just like just said, yo, just commented like, yo, this is inspirational. And I'm like, you don't really get those words too often. All you know what I'm saying? All it takes is one. It's, and it's like, you know, it's it's, it's kind of like what ball players say, like, yo, I show up early because, you know, whoever's in the stands, they might see me for the 
this might be the only time they see me this season. Or, you know, you never know who's watching you in the gym right now. Yep. Or who don't know. So now that's like actually been like a recent mindset, bro. Like it's been like, yo, like it's not just about you now. Like you doing something that's different. And there might be some people that's super interested in what you're doing. So if you stop, who's to say that? Damn, they're going to look at you like, yo, he stopped. Like, I'm, you know, I can stop too. Nah, bro. Like, yeah. you got to at least figure something out because, you know, there might be someone that's looking up to you and be like, yo, this is, this is pretty interesting. So that's kind of been a lot of the fire uh, of late. And that's kind of been something that I've been, uh, you know, really, really strong on. Yeah, I mean, for for me, that that approach that you talked about, of course, you know, when I played, I, I adopted that mindset. I read Michael Jordan's first book, and he he talked about that in his book. You know, the reason why I went so hard was because you know there was a kid who his parents paid their last to get here, so I'm gonna light this other team up, give them 45 because, well, you know, that's what I do. But also, right. I want people to go back and tell their friends, like, hey, I saw Mike give this get this kid 45 and it was it was we were halfway through the third quarter you know you, when you approach things like that it, it raises that self-accountability to a certain level but it also raises the quality of 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 how you work because you you're not going to put out no no bs because like we talked about that one person you only need that one person to tell a friend and then maybe that friend tells a friend so it starts a, a, a basically just a, a domino effect where everybody's going to start to check in on you and it but it, but the the root of it is I, I gotta put on for that person that's never had this experience before right Ex know? exactly like 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 we were talking about earlier yeah be putting on for the folks that might be interested in learning more about it or have aspirations but also Damn, that might be a connection there, almost like a hockey assist. Okay, maybe this person can't help me necessarily business wise, but they might know somebody that's super interested, that's interested in, in doing something or, or, or breaking bread. So it, it doesn't make sense not to go hard, regardless, and for, for whoever. At all times, and also the competition is on your heels every single day. So when when you Gotta don't want to wake up too. and do that work. Is somebody in your lane right now that's probably knocking out 10 pieces of content today. Exactly. And he putting it out to the people. And, you know, he's upgrading his equipment. All of these things are taking place, man. So you got to do the work. Bryce, listen, man, we at, we at the end of the show. Before we get out of here, man, uh, I want you to share your socials uh, and anything else that you're doing right now that you want the people to, to lock into share your socials and, and, and we'll wrap up. Yeah, no doubt. Appreciate you. Um, on Twitter and Instagram, my personal page is at underscore Brysington, B-R-Y-C-I-N-G-N or G-T-O-N. Um, and then sh the shot callers at the period shot callers on Instagram. Uh, check us out. Websites on there as well. Uh, so, but yeah, we're, we're, we're cooking, man. Appreciate the platform. Appreciate the opportunity. Nah, man, appreciate you dropping those gems, man, and showing up and, and, and showing out, man. I mean, I'm sure we could have a, a a lot of other types of conversations, but, you know, I really wanted to get your story out, man. And listen, you're always welcome to come back anytime you're dropping something fire, anytime you want to pro, promote something, man, just let me know. We, we, we'll we get a crack in. I've, listen, um, I've, I've been talking to our mutual friend late, man. I'm trying to get the NY, man. They have direct flights. Come on, Hopefully, man. man. Come they on. Have the red flights, man. It's about to start warming up too. Oh, man, man, man. I'm I'm Spring. trying to get to the city, man. I haven't I haven't been back. I haven't been um to New York in a long time, man. And you know, just with with this podcast growing, man, I you know, I'm, my my New York connects are starting to grow. So I, I think I think it's about that time, man. Always welcome, man. You know you got people out here, so we just just let us know. Give us a shout. Yeah, man. Maybe that's my manifestation. I'm, I'm gonna put that out there. Right, as get, a fact. Get some, of that, get some of that good New York food. That's but, a fact. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just tuned into another episode of the Couch with Rob Fields on the heels of De La Soul Day. 
De La. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace to Dave. You know what I'm saying? That's why I wore my T-shirt today. I didn't wear no couch merch today uh, because De La Soul Day was yesterday. They just released their music on all streaming platforms. All platforms, yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite groups, them and Tribe. You know, mu- the music thing is, is, yeah, we could go for hours about the music thing. But yeah, so this episode has been great. It's a it's a fest, fest, festive type of weekend. Bryce Tarrant just came in and dropped some jewels for us. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how we do when we get up out of the episode. It costs nothing to be good to someone. Be good to someone today. I'm Rob Fields. He's Bryce Tarrant. And we just wrapped up another episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.